Monty and I, before we were dating, well, we didn't date, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> before, before we were a couple, we were partners in ministry. And um, we went to <clears throat> a community center and we ministered to the boys <coughs> and to the girls that were there. Well, um, I had started there and I was talking to the boys, but we didn't have anybody to talk to the girls and mm -hmm. Monty came on in. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was uh, teaching the boys in one section of the, of the building and Monty would teach the girls on the other section of the building. I remember um, getting done with my session early and going and listening in on what Monty was teaching the girls. And I said, you know, I like her Bible study better than I like Monty. <laughs> Amen. Um, and so um, I, I know that you are in for a treat. Um, you may like her Bible study more than you like mine, but I'm coming back next time. Amen. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's receive our first lady, Sister Monty. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. So when we were leaving the last church, someone was um, giving me a hug and, and um, <laughs> just letting me know how much they would miss me. But they said, one thing that I regret while you were here is we never got, got to hear from you. And that's something that the Lord placed on my heart and he's really been pressing my heart more and more about that. So um, I just thank God for this opportunity to be before you tonight, and I thank my husband for trusting me Amen. to teach his Bible study. Okay, so we are in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and we're going to start with verse 19 through 24. Okay, and I just want to take some time and just read this passage to us. Okay, so it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So what Jesus is teaching here is not limited to money or things. Okay, storing up our treasures in heaven is really about putting God first and valuing the things of God. Because a treasure is something that we value, right? Yes. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about putting God first and valuing God's word, God's will, and God's way. Okay. So there are 66 books in the Bible, right? Yes. How many of us are familiar with those 66 books of the Bible? Now, the Bible is our basic instruction before leaving earth, right? Yes. It's our road map. It's our guide. It's very important to us. But how many of us can give a summary of each of those 66 books in the Bible? Don't what about half? of the books in the Bible. How many of us can give a summary of just half of the books of the Bible? Okay, don't be, you know, don't be alarmed because I'm convicted as well. This is God's word and he expects for us to know his word, right? Amen. Amen. Many of us know Genesis right. and we know Exodus, but how, how many of us know Leviticus? and numbers and in the new testament and in the new testament how many of us have read through acts Amen. and know who titus is yes. i'm just saying this so that we will know that we have to do better 
So this year, I made a goal that I would read through more of the books of the Bible, those books that I'm not as familiar with, and that I would start with Jeremiah. So I'm reading um, all 52 books of Jeremiah, and I started this challenge with my daughter, Jada. So Jada has already surpassed me, and she's now moved on. <laughs> but my point is, is that we have to start somewhere. Okay, so let's look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. So he tells us to read God's word every day. Yes. Not just once a day, but he says morning and night. But many times we don't read God's word because there are other things that we treasure. There are other things that we value. That's right. I was recently reading in Psalms 119 and 2 in the King James Version, and it says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. And I asked the Lord, I said, what do you mean by your testimonies that keep your testimonies? I said, is that the testimony that I have of what you're doing in my life or what you're doing in my sister's life at church? And he says, no, it's the scriptures because the scriptures are my testimonies. They testify about my mighty acts. Yes. Yes. So we have Abraham and we have David and we have Paul and we may know about their testimonies, but there's so many, there's hundreds of others in God's word. Do we know their testimonies? What God did in their lives yeah. is for us, is for us to keep. Yeah. So God says we're blessed when we keep those testimonies. Amen. Psalms 119 and 125 says, I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. Amen. And verse 129 says, thy testimonies are wonderful. Yeah. Therefore doth my soul keep them. Yeah. So his testimonies are his word, and we must search after them, love them, and keep them. Putting God first means valuing God's word. Yes. Yes. So God's word is a lamp into our feet, right? And a light into our path, is it not? Yes. God's word is good for correction, yes. for reproof. Yes. It's for good for training in righteousness. God's yes. word is good, right? Yes. And so it's up to us to value God's word. So that's, that's the first um, part of putting God's, God first is putting his word first. Yeah. And we're going to move on to valuing God's will. <coughs> Hebrews 10 and 36 says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, mm -hmm. you will receive what he has promised. God does have a will for us that we must esteem as greater than and better than our own will. Right. God made us and gave us self-will, right? Yes. But the Bible says that our thoughts are not his thoughts right. and our ways are not his ways, which means we have the responsibility to seek after God's will yes. and what he wants us to do. It's our responsibility to seek his will. Yes. Because we're not going to naturally go for his will, are we? No. Jesus said when he was praying before he went to the cross, he said, Lord, allow this cup to pass from me. He really didn't want to do it, did he? But then he went on to say, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Sometimes following God's will is going to feel like you're dying. It's going to feel that way when he tells you to let go of a relationship yes. wow. or a job yes. or a pastime yes. that competes with God. Yes. So when our will is stronger than God's will for us, we need to persevere like Jesus did in prayer. Yes. He knew, like many of us, that what he wanted wasn't what God wanted. It wasn't God's will, but Jesus didn't stop or give in to his will, but he pushed. 
his way in the presence of God. And so he felt full confidence of God's grace and his power. And we, got, we have got to value God's will over ours and, and put him first. So this is another way of putting God first, is putting his will before our own will. Next, valuing God's way. God's way is to be valued too. Since we've been reading through the book of Matthew in Bible study, we've learned that Jesus has a different way of teaching yes. uh, the commandments than what the Jews were used to, right? Exactly. So he says he didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. So Jesus, he teaches that... Um, that in terms of murder, thou shalt not murder, he says if you have anger in your heart, that you are subject to judgment, right? Yeah. Yeah. He has a different way of, of viewing the law. He's teaching a way that we are to live. He teaches that if you even look upon a woman to lust, then you've committed adultery. Yeah. He teaches that there is a way for us to live for him. He says to pray for our enemies. And we know that that's not easy, right? But we have to be careful with following the will of God. Jesus teaches in the first part of Matthew chapter 6 that when we pray, not to do it to be seen. And when we fast, that we are not to broadcast it, right? And he teaches that um, when we give to others, not to boast. So he's explaining to us his ways, that he has a way for these commandments to be followed. Psalms 119 and 1 says, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. God is concerned about our ways, and he says we are blessed when they're pure and blameless. But when they're not, when our ways aren't pure, then we can make it a matter of prayer, like Jesus did. So God's word says he perfects the things that concern us. So if we're concerned about our ways not lining up, he said that he'll perfect it. He'll perfect our ways. He'll make them right. Yes. So you can really see the difference between God's word, his will, and his way. Initially, I thought, well, God, isn't it all the same? Right. And he said, no, it's not. And he showed me in scripture where it talks about the rich man yes. and how the rich man came to Jesus. Yes. And what did he say? He says, Jesus How can I attain eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know. He said, follow the commandments. And the rich man says, well, I do that. He says, I've been doing that since I was a youth. But Jesus took it a step further. He says, well, go and sell all of your your possessions. That's right. That was it. That he wasn't willing to do. So sometimes God will tell us something specific that he wants us to do. So we have his, his word, the Bible that we follow. But also look for him to speak to us and give us specific instructions. Because he wants us to follow him. He wants us to follow his word, his will, and his way. Okay, and to value them. So we're going to move on. Uh, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. And that reads, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, They do not sow or reap or store away barns, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? 
And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that they need them. But seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Okay, so is there a difference between worry and concern? What would you say? Okay, so when we are concerned about something, we're unsettled, right? We're bothered by it. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're worried about it, because in Scripture, the Bible says that um, we are to cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. Okay, so he tells us what to do with those concerns and cares, but he tells us not to worry, right? right. He says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving to make our request known to him. So he knows that we're going to have concerns. That's why we pray, right? Yeah. Because there's things that bother us. There are things that um, we're unsettled about. And so it's natural. We're going to pray. But he tells us we're going to, to be concerned. But he tells us what to do with those concerns. Yeah. And I just wanted to share that um, it's, this is so timely for God to ask for my husband to ask me to teach and for God to use this time because this is the very word that the Lord has led me to for the past three weeks. This is the very word that the Lord has led me to. This has been my go-to scripture for the past three weeks. And I've gotten to, I had gotten to the point where I had so much going on. I w- applied for a director position with the um, homeschool program that we're enrolled in and I had to write essays for that. And I was on a panel at a high school um, power lunch program. And we went away to a funeral and I spoke at the funeral and just more than usual. And in addition to teaching my children and teaching other children, and I said, God, I just, I don't know if I can do all of this. And God said, seek me first. And I said, well, I do, but what, what do I do? <laughs> and he said, seek me in the mornings. You know, sometimes we think that because we have so much going on, we don't have time. This is not the time for God right now. He says, no, seek me in the morning, no matter how much you have going on. And I said, okay. And so I made it a point to wake up earlier and spend my time with God And as I ministered to God, he ministered to me, and he gave me vision, direction, creativity, all that I needed to complete the task. So I was spending time with God with my journal, getting work done. (laughs) It was amazing because it was what God was pouring into me. He was taking care of me, as he says he does. And I just want to encourage all of you that um, God says that we are his prized possession. He says, of course I care more for you than the lilies of the field, but I take care of them too. So trust God. Know that, um, that he loves us, that we're created in his image, that we're his trophies, and he will take care of us. But he wants us to value him and to put him first and to make him our treasure. I think that's so important. And... When we become familiar with God's word, we can understand that they're not just commandments to keep us from having fun, from doing what we want to do. They're not just in place for that reason, but we can see the heart of God, that he loves us, that he wants to protect us. Um, So, yes, there's a spirit behind 
um, God's Word. And I think that's really important. And the more that we read the Bible, we can understand the heart of God. Yes. It's like um, as we parent our children, we want them to know that even as we're disciplining, disciplining them, we want them to know our heart. And we want to win their heart even as we're disciplining them. Yes. And so, yes, that is very important that we know God.